Hello, welcome to another house renovation vlog. Okay, she's done with me. It's been a hot minute. The last time I did one of these um, was a few months ago, and I think I remember the last thing I did in that video was install some bamboo flooring. And then the next step after that was to start installing some trim that I had made in the previous vlog. I did do that, I didn't film it. I was just getting to a spot where I was like, the time it took to set up the camera and film and stuff was really slowing me down. So I just didn't film a lot of that, but I can show you here. Oh, thank you, honey. Why do cats, like, they always just go straight for the butthole in the view? Whether it's on a work call or on here, straight to the butthole. So yeah, it was just slowing me down. I did do it. And then it got to a point where like, the prices of everything were getting so insane that I could not do this at the pace I wanted to do it. So I just took a few months off. I did do some other projects in the meantime that I will show you. Um, like the guest bedroom, I worked on a lot. I did this um, this like accent wall that I uh, tried to replicate from a Pinterest, or a pin I found on Pinterest. So I did that, I loved the way it turned out. But the room, the guest bedroom has been without trim for months and it's bugging me and I just need to get it done so I figure if I film it I can hold myself accountable and just get a lot of those things done that I have been putting off. I got some fuel. Not really though, it's decaf. Also, look at these. Is this not so pretty? We have sunflowers, zinnias, snapdragons, bachelor's button, there's some adjuratum in there too. Guess where I got this? My own garden. What? I wrote myself off as having a, what do they call it, black thumb? I don't have a green thumb, that's what I thought. But now that I have this house, I had ample opportunity to try gardening, like for real. And I told myself, I'm not gonna do any vegetables because I don't, I didn't wanna like try really hard to have food and then be disappointed if I didn't have food. So I thought flowers was an easier, like less pressure way to go. Like I'm not depending on that for food, you know? If it grows, that's nice, it's pretty. If it doesn't, no big deal. But I had a lot of success with these. I, I cannot get over how pretty snapdragons are. The little white one right there and the dark purple one. They're so pretty. So we have success there. I'm so happy about that. Okay, I need to stop procrastinating and I need to go get, bring the wood inside that I bought new trim. Which P.S. I had a lot of anxiety about going to buy that trim because the previous wood I worked on that y'all saw in the previous video, I didn't like physically go out to get that wood. My husband did because I had anxiety about doing that. Like I just picture myself walking into one of these lumber stores and all the men being there like, what the hell's this woman doing here? She don't know what she's doing. So I just, I had a lot of anxiety about it and I, I don't know what I'm doing. So I just walked in there, I was scared, and I said, I need to get some one by fours. And they looked at me like, okay. So they asked me what kind, and they gave me like a few different options of pine. I don't know. I just said, I don't know, I'm doing this for trim. So they recommended one to me and that was that. And then I also had anxiety about like, how am I gonna physically put this in the truck? Like I'm scared I won't be able to hold it and they'll think I look like, stupid or something, but they actually put it all in the truck for me. Like I just drove to this little spot, gave them a piece of paper and they put it in my truck and I just drove off. So it was so easy. Now I don't have anxiety about it. It sounds stupid, but those little things that like, like I, I need to focus on those little wins like that in life. Like that was hard for me to do. I had a lot of anxiety about it, but I did it. So I need to be proud of myself for that and call it a win. Okay, let's go get the wood. It's been like an hour. I did some work off camera because it's boring. Um, I did the trim in one of the closets that just needed to be done. And it doesn't look perfect because I was using a lot of scraps in that area just so I don't have a lot of waste. It doesn't look that good, but it's done. I'll be able to patch it up with um, that pink goop, whatever that is. <laughs> Next, I'm gonna do the window, which is a very fun part. So here's the window. So there's no trim on it now. So I'm going to, I guess, do a tutorial of sorts for how I'm going to do this. I'll just walk you through it. The first part I need to do is the window sill, I believe it's called. It's the piece that sits right here on this, I don't know what this stuff is called. 
this piece right here. So for the window look I'm going for, and I'll put a picture somewhere. I, sequentially I have to do this first because there's like other pieces on top of it. So this has to be first. So what I've done is I've measured the width from edge to edge inside here on this plane, which was 35 inches. And then I measured how deep this is, like how from wall to the window, how deep is that? I got, what was that? 3.5 inches. Then I need to measure from this edge to how far the leg is gonna stick out. And the way I got that was I basically just held a one by four here, which I actually have here. I just held a one by four here. This is where this will be ins installed later on. So I held it here in place. And then I measured from this edge to the edge of this plus half an inch out. And that was 4.25 inches. I drew a little diagram of all that. Looks like this. So I won't be using a one by four for this piece of wood. It'll be a one by six, which I have some in the garage. So I'm gonna go get one of those and I need to get a jigsaw too. So I'll be right back. I need a bumblebee. Okay, so I'm back. I cut my piece of one by six and I cut it at 43 and a half. So I haven't cut those little square notches out yet. Right now it's just a plain piece of one by six cut at 43 and a half. I also took the time to, uh, to route, is that what you call it? I used a router to do a round over edge right here. And this edge would be like this, okay? So that way on the edge of the sill, it'll be like a nice soft curve um, instead of an abrupt right angle. I also took the time to sand it a little bit um, just from experience doing that other window. I should have sanded it a lot more so I took the time to sand it. There is a little knot here that I'll have to fill but that won't be that big of a deal. At this point now I need to start cutting out the square notches so that it can slide in here. So I need to do that with my jigsaw so I think I'm gonna take you guys in the garage with me now. Hi guys, we're in the garage. This router is unplugged, so don't worry about it turning on me. I need to measure in 4.25 inches on each edge, and that should be three and a half inches away from the non-routed edge. I'm going to measure three, three and a half, down. I really hate tape, tape measures. I think they're the stupidest invention. They just flop around. You have to have two people sometimes to use it. It's stupid. That would be three and a half inches down. Let's see. And then 4.25 inches in. Okay. I essentially have a box drawn here that I need to cut out with the jigsaw and then I will do the same on the other side. So I have it in now. Um, all I did to actually install it was I just put a couple of screws right here on the top of the sill. I don't know if you can see, but there's a little bit of a gap here between the sill and the wall. I'm not too worried about it because it's going to be covered up with a piece of wood like that. So I'm not that worried. The next step is uh, we're going to need a piece of 1x4 um, that goes from the bottom of the sill, that little leg that's sticking out, from the bottom of that all the way to the top. And um, when I say the top, I mean the top of the, like where the drywall starts at the top of the window. You actually want it to go like the tiniest bit above that. Um, I'll try to do a close up of what I mean. So here, come with me. We're gonna, this is just a sample piece of wood. Yes, that is cat prints all over that sample piece of wood. It's just a designated piece I have for stuff like this. So 
She's walked all over it. So we're gonna need a piece of one by four, which is this size. It's gonna rest on top of that leg there, and it's gonna go all the way to the top, right where the drywall starts. And when you do this, you, you don't wanna butt the one by four all the way up against the edge. You actually wanna do it like a little bit like that. I don't know if there's like a standard measurement. I usually go with like an eighth of an inch. And that same thing will apply up there. It'll be like that. I'm on my tippy toes. Not like that. And you'll wanna make sure to measure on both sides. Don't assume that you can measure once and apply that to both sides. They could be literally a quarter of an inch different. So make sure to measure both sides. Okay, the next thing I'm gonna do is install this i use a brad nailer and sometimes if it feels like the wood is like it's impossible to be flush against the wall whether that be the wood is warped or the wall is not perfectly straight i will use a screw to like get extra strength and kind of force it into spot so i already have one nail in here just so i could show you but let me finish this real quick i can tell i'm going to need a screw at the bottom here it's just it's warped wood i think so let me do that if you're doing this by yourself, a good tip is to like, if you find it's hard to hold the wood with you where you want it and handle something like this, drill this into the wood a little bit, not all the way through, just so you can get it started. So the screw is in there just a little. <laughs> now I can really use my other hand to force it where I want it. That looked pretty good. Okay, next. Um, oh, I did this off camera. I went ahead and did this other side. It's the same exact thing as this side, but remember to measure both of them because they might be different. I can't remember if I mentioned as well, but on the outer edges of both of these, I did that round over thing again with the router just to make it a nice smooth edge. So the next step is to get you a one by two, which is not actually two, it's one and a half. And I went ahead and took a sander to it. And on two of these edges here, these short edges, like short this way, I took the sander to it and just made those edges smooth. Just trust me on that. It's, it's going to take paint way better than if you didn't. It'll just look like a much better final product. So I did that. And the next step is to... Put it here, and <clears throat> the length of that should be the same length as your sill. So that window sill piece we just did, you cut it to the same length as that, the overall length. So this is the next step. You literally just lay it on there, and you can use your nail gun. And I put the nails into the edge of these pieces from the top. So let me do that real quick. Okay, so the next step is to get um, a piece of 1x6 and you're going to cut it to the length um, of whatever this edge is to this edge is. So it'll be shorter than the width of that top piece, just by a little bit. We're going for this width right here, okay? So let me go cut that real quick. Okay, next you're going to take that piece you cut and I sanded the edges that would be exposed um, just a little bit, like right on the edge here. I just think it looks, from experience in the other room, it just looks better if it's not such a harsh, like freshly cut edge. So I sanded this part, this little corner on both sides. So the next part, you are just going to put this up here. Did I do it wrong still? Okay, my cut was just off an inch, so I fixed that real quick. And all you're gonna do is put this on top, center it, and this board is really wonky, I can feel it, so I'm gonna have to use a lot of screws and force it into place. But yeah, it just goes on top, make sure it's level, and then just screw it in. Hi guys, it's a new day. I left off at the same exact spot, so we left off with this big guy up top. I literally just put a screw in the wall on the left side, in the middle, 
and on the right side. Ooh! So, um, do you remember this piece? It's a one by two, and I told you that I sanded these edges on the profile. So, <coughs> Sorry, do you remember this piece? The one by two? So what I'm trying to say is we're gonna repeat this exact step. So whatever I told you for this one before, repeat that exactly again and we're gonna put it on top of the big guy. I have mine right here, which tip for you, I actually didn't have any one by twos in house, like in stock. I did have one by fours. So I just used the table saw to cut them lengthwise in half not literally in half. A one by two is not exactly two inches, it's one and a half. So I basically just cut the one by four down to make this these both one and a half. We're just gonna lay this on top like that. I don't know how I'm gonna get that in because the nailer won't fit. Hmm. Okay, so the last piece for this is another piece of one by four. Um, I didn't use the router on it, it's just cut to length. I did sand some of those profile edges like I was talking about earlier, like this edge right here, just so it's not so crisp. Paint doesn't take to that well in my opinion. So the last thing you're going to do is you're going to cut a piece of 1x4 to the same length that you cut the big piece of 1x6 at the top. The largest piece, whatever length that was, cut this 1x4 to length. And then you're just going to stick it under the windowsill, making sure to center it, and you screw it in. And that's it. Um, I completely finished all the trim in this guest bedroom now. I did the doorway into the room, the window which you already saw, and the closet, and inside the closet too. So next I need to do crown molding, and I tried to start doing it by myself, but I just physically cannot do that by myself. Like hold it against a huge wall, and like hold it with one hand, and I, I just can't do it by myself. So I'm gonna wait for my husband to get home to do that, and then, Next, oh, next I need to do caulking and painting, which normally uh, that's boring, so I probably won't film that. But other than that, I need to figure out something about the doors. Like, I'm not a fan of these doors throughout the house, these bifold closet doors. I mean, I would hate to replace them because they're perfectly fine and I don't want them to just end up in a dump. But, I don't know, some of them don't close very well. That one closes all right, I guess. I don't know, I gotta think about what I wanna do. Do I wanna just slap a coat of paint on it? I don't know. Well, that's it for today. I'm gonna close this one out here. I'm gonna try to keep up with vlogs um, for the home innovation stuff, like on a somewhat regular cadence. When I first started the series, I thought I'd be able to do it faster, but I just, I like working full time and everything. I don't have the time to be able to do it as fast as I wanted. It's making me wonder like, I've really been inspired by McKenna from the YouTube channel XO McKenna. She is redoing this whole cottage and like, just me doing this silly project by myself, I'm exhausted. And so I'm watching her channel and I'm like, how does this girl have the energy to do all of these things? Like she is constantly go, 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 go just like hammering out projects, literally and metaphorically. How does she have the energy to do that? I go for her, but I don't have that energy. So I'm just gonna take my time and go slow. When I feel inspired, I'll do it. And if I need a break, I'll take a break and I'm not gonna beat myself up about it. So yeah, I'm gonna close it out here and I'll see you guys later. Bye.